Well, now, it isn't by accident, because uh, we have a choice of the cases that uh, we take. And we do take, uh, well, big cases and law-making cases, and they do attract a lot of uh, publicity. And I suppose um, we like the law that we make uh, to, to find its way into the intelligence of the layman. So if um, the newspapers and television want to report the law that's being made, that's fine with me, because I think the law is part of the people, and the people should know about the law. Well, do you think, then, if, if someone like yourself didn't take the cases, the soldiers of this world, the Jack Rubies of this world, would perhaps not get a good defense or get a very second-rate one? Well, I'm so modest that sometimes I even think they'd be better off. The English observers uh, <laughs> do say that you get away with murder in the courtroom. Could you, well, do you I think, think what you mean some of my clients do. Well, some of your clients <laughs> Could you practice uh, as, as you do in America, over here in Britain? I, I sure could. I don't think I would have uh, any trouble at all trying a case in a dignified manner. To me, a dignified manner is a legal manner before your judges. If I needed to bring in a leg, if I needed to bring in an aerial photo, if I needed to bring in a, a, a mock-up of, of a car, or if I needed, for example, to bring in uh, Bobby Unser, which I did in the case just before I left the United States, testify in a racing driving case, and a mock-up of a Ford, whole Ford uh, automobile, I would explain to your judge beforehand that I couldn't show what happened in this case without that. And I'm sure that your judge would welcome the opportunity to, to be educated, just like a jury. Your name became world-known, worldwide known, when you were tried in with Ruby in the recent court. Mm -hmm. Was that the most fascinating case that you had to do? Oh, no, no. It was a case... I guess um, gave us about as much international attention, focused on our law as anything, and made our law look awfully bad. I presume made me look bad. I don't think anyone realizes that uh, I took the case upstairs and uh, reversed it, as I promised Jack Ruby that I would. And as a result of, of um, that case, and then uh, Lee tried, uh, Lee Bailey tried the Shepherd case after that, and then there was a Billy Saulesti's case, and as a result of Ruby and the rest of those, we came down with our law now that there can't be pretrial publicity. If there is, the, the case is uh, set aside. Now, that's exactly what uh, Mr. Nixon, who is a lawyer, I don't know whether he's a good or a bad lawyer, but I don't see how he could have made the slip that he did that uh, Manson is guilty. They should stop that trial right now because that case will end with a conviction. Manson will be settled, sentenced to death. It will take two years to get that on up on appeal. After it's up on appeal, it will be reversed. It will cost $2 million. It'll come back on down five years from now and be retried as a result of the pretrial publicity, which was the President of the United States' remark that uh, Manson is guilty. Now, that is the grossest, most dramatic, abrasive remark of pretrial publicity, and by a lawyer who's President of the United States that I've ever heard. But you can't have that uh, anymore. That was a remark that I thought that he might have uh, Mr. Agnew say rather than say himself, but he let that one slip out. Then what chance do you think does someone like Manson of, of a fair trial at all if it if the, the trial hasn't been stopped when the remark has been made by President Well, he doesn't have any chance at all. He'll get a conviction, he'll be sentenced to death, and it'll be reversed. He'll be brought back and retried. And by that time, I think capital punishment in the United States will be outlawed. I don't think that Saran. Um, I think that I'll have something to do, and there'll be an announcement on the Saran case when I get back to the United States. I'll have something to do with that. But I think in the Saran case, that uh, they never never will be uh, capital punishment attached to that. Mr. Bellai, is there any kind of case that you can think of that you would refuse to take? Well, I think you can say something for every one of our brothers. And I think it's a duty of, of, of a lawyer to take on everything. And uh, if, if you say it's a dirty case, you're editorializing. If you say it's a pornography case or an obscene case, don't get into that dirty field. Well, I've told many a jury and many a judge in the United States that the right to see a dirty film or to see a topless is the same right that someday may uh, give you a right to go into a church of your choosing because these things are all inextricably tied in together in the law. So I think if you're going to be a lawyer, you can't be a moralist. You can't be a, uh, the advocate who goes out and picks and chooses and wants to be a dilettante in the profession. God forgive uh, the fellow who goes into the law and wants to uh, present cause and wants to select here and there.